Hello. Good afternoon. Um, I, I was debating on doing this. I wasn't going to do this, but now I am. So. Hey, I was bipolar for 38 years, you know what I mean? I mean, things tend to fail into <laughs> insignificance when you consider I'm now mostly sane. Um, wow. Uh, Kent. Kent, Surrey and Sussex Enforcement Business Centre. Courts, supposed to be. Now ask yourself why it's called a business centre to start with. Because it's not a court at all. It's a revenue raising machine. Um, now this is there's two different warrants here which they've just lumped into one. Because you can do that apparently. You know, it doesn't matter if it's separate cases. We'll just add the figures together. Um, all this has been covered. Uh, on the channel. If you look on the channel on the playlists, it's called Kent Police. It was one of the one of these. Now, firstly, I may say that with, with the speeding fine in Kent Police, I wasn't even informed a court case was on happening at all, right? Because <laughs> that's what the police. That's what the police do. They have secret court cases. Um, and the other one, which was goes back to PC Dean. Um, when I, when I got a phone call, which I mentioned the other day, actually, in a video. I got a phone call on a Friday afternoon, unlogged call, as it later turned out. Um, and the police, the police, I didn't hear the name of the guy, but they're like, oh, we want to investigate 25 years worth of theft in a public purse, orchestrated by John Major. So I'm like, okay, I'll be home tonight, you know, which I was going to be. Um, and then they turned up and arrested me. Um, and I can't remember what, the, I think it was when I threatened the bailiff, I'm not sure. But then of course, because I self-defended myself when they walked in and I had no idea, pushed away in, and I had no idea why they were there, um, that was then assault police, because I, I self-defended myself. Because <laughs> I pushed him, I pushed PC Dean, pushed him. Not that I want to get done for slander, but because he's a big, fat, uh, homosexual um, sissy, basically, right? And he likes to exploit his, his badge and his uniform, but he doesn't like it when people argue back, because that, that's what the police are. They're, they're all just cowards, basically. Um, so, they've now sent me this HMCTS Kent Surrey at Sussex Enforcement business centre. They've now sent me this saying I still owe them a grand and a half. This was three years ago. <laughs> three. Um, wow, I mean, two years ago in May, five police officers, and this was to do with what this is, I forget which, which supposed charge. You never had any warrants to start with. Let's get that clear straight away. But the two years ago in May, five police officers and their bailiff mate turned up and knocked on the door for 27 minutes. That's on the channel. Um, May 18th, I think it was. Um, and I could, I've not heard from them since, not really. <laughs> um, and that, that then... I forget which one it was, like I say, but then that, the warrant, the warrant, it was six months out of date then. So you see where we're going here. So honestly, can I just explain this to you? Um, HMCTS Kent, Surrey and Sussex Enforcement, Enforcement Business Centre. You have a year to enforce the warrant. <laughs> right, with the speeding fine, if you go on the Kent Police playlist, um, it, it happened in March or April or something. Well, because I ripped all their paperwork up on camera and, and never corresponded with them, they eventually had the case in November, and I think it was last November, um, I think probably the day before their warrant, which they didn't have, ran out. Um, <laughs> one, one bailiff knocked on the door on a Saturday night and of course they didn't answer and then he sat in his car outside for about 15 minutes because he said 
you know, you, you've got 45 minutes to get the ground and a half together, or, you know, oh, actually, there's nothing I can do except knock on the door. Um, and this was when, when I got this thing through, because it happened, happened in November, they were saying the warrant only becomes active when we send it to the bailiffs. <laughs> not, when, not, when they've, not when they've had the offence was committed and the normal run of things was you'd, you'd have a court case in a week or a couple of weeks after that. No, no, they'd just given themselves an extra six months. <laughs> I mean, you, you're not that bright, are you? In fact, you're really quite stupid. Because you really just think you can make up the law as you go along. I love it. Are you struggling financially? Um, well, no, I'm, I'm doing quite well at the moment, actually. Thanks for asking. Um, before you contact us, when you contact the enforcement team by phone, email or letter, we'll need the details below to find your court fine record. Full name, date of birth, address including postcode. <laughs> account number. Their account number. Uh, division code. Uh, what has changed or what financial difficulties you're experiencing? Um, but the only thing that's changed is that three years later you're chasing up a warrant that was already out to date a warrant. They never had any warrants for anything, any of it. Never answered the door to the police, ever. If they've got a criminal warrant, they can come through your door. So never, ever answer the door to the police, ever, ever. Jesus, three years later, two and a half years later, whatever it is. It was a long time ago. Um, wow, so there you go. That's that's really quite incredible. I mean, just more law-breaking, basically, just more threatening behaviour. Um And they're still on, you know, about attachment of earnings orders. They could, they could, see, they're, they're talking about CCJs here. They can't do CCJs because it's not a debt. If you haven't complied, if you haven't, this is what I learned having made all my mistakes, which cost me several thousand pounds. But just don't answer the door to them. Don't interact with them in any way. You know, if you see a policeman walking down the street, cross the street and, and go the other way. Um, Basically, they're a criminal mafia, right? <laughs> um, other steps may be taken in accordance with regulations, including issuing a warrant for your arrest or increasing the fine by 50%. But yeah, but all you can do is knock on the door. So if the person doesn't answer the door, you're stuffed. You can't arrest anyone, can you? Because you're bailiffs. You, you glorified traffic wardens, basically. Mind you, the police actually are just glorified traffic wardens now. Um, wow. I'll say, I'm keeping that. I see the police out in the motorway now when, the, when the, there's been a breakdown, someone's broken down in the hard shoulder or something, so they have to sit beside them with their Christmas lights on, going, <laughs> flashing little blue lights, you know. That's where you're at, police. You're, you're traffic wardens. No one cares about you. <laughs> 